How's it going guys? Um, today we'll be using a uh, soap I've never used before, a scent. And this one is called Alarta by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. This is in the uh, CK6 formula. Um, I've been trying, starting to get more Phoenix scents. They're just appealing to me. I did get a bunch of samples. You could order the samples for like a dollar. And I kind of narrowed it down to this. This is what a fresh puck looks like. Interesting. It's not the flattest pour, but it's not absolutely horrible either. So, very nice scent. I like it. It just appeals to me. Um, also, we'll be using a razor I've never used before. I thought I'd try it out. Had my eye on it for about over a year. Forgot about it and just said, screw it, let's check it out. And this is the Mula Raka. This is the black handle model. And a couple of interesting things about this razor. As you can see, it's like a satin color, satin, silver, whatever you want to call it. This is a, a hollow stainless steel handle, so it's pretty light. It feels similar to like a titanium handle almost. Um, it's pretty cool. I like it. It feels pretty grippy. I don't know if you can see the grooves in there. Uh, hard to see, but I think it's cool. Um, another interesting thing. Oh yeah, here's the top cap. So pretty clean. And another interesting thing about this razor, I don't know if you could tell by looking at this base plate, but no lather channels, guys. <laughs> I've never seen this before in a safety razor ever. Like, that's crazy. This is a newer version. The older versions didn't have this, I don't believe. Um, this is like the fourth iteration I heard. So I'm glad I waited to pick this up because uh, they had issues where they weren't cutting well. And they, I think they had a version where this part right here, the threading was like uh, uh, welded onto the top cap. It wasn't one piece, um, but apparently they've, they've since fixed it. So we'll be giving that a shot. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, actually let me show you a side shot before I get into it. Um, so if you look here, there is a bigger gap here that that's probably gonna be responsible for holding the lather. So a little bit different. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Timeless Razor. I've used it before on this channel. Um, it has similar channels in like where it's thicker in the in the the head, so it can hold a lather rather than putting it to the bottom. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll be using a fresh Nasset for the first impressions. The blade overhang is absolutely minimal. Like it's probably like a fraction of a millimeter. You can't even see it. So we're gonna do that. So it fits perfectly. Cool. And uh, it's actually 80 grams totally. Uh, but like I said, since it's hollow, the weight of the handle, or the weight of the razor does tilt towards the head. So it's not gonna be evenly balanced if I'm on my finger here, it's gonna tip. Yeah, so I have to put my finger like all the way at the top, maybe. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, yeah, see how it goes. Um, for the brush, I'll be using the Declaration B5 uh, in my Shave Mac candle. And we'll be using, why not, PAA uh, Pre Shave in the CK6 formula type oils. And we're working on like two days of growth, maybe a day and a half. You kind of see what kind of stubble I'm working with. So we'll see how it does. I love this applicator on this uh, pre-shave stick. It's just, so everyone gets the cube because you get much more pre-shave soap in cube form, but I love the applicator. You don't have to get your hands dirty as much, or both hands rather. But they work, both work fine. Yeah, this stuff is so thick, like you could probably shave with this. I probably shouldn't have applied so much. I'll probably do a 15 second load, because if I do a 30 second load, I'll be lathering for like 25 minutes, <laughs> like 20 minutes, which I don't want to do since I'm on camera. <laughs> I'm 
I don't think I'd want to allow that long off camera either. <laughs> to be frankly honest. Anyways. So I'm just drying my hands here. All right, let's get to it. I'll go over the scent in a minute. So we're at 518. We'll go to 528. Sorry, I didn't shake out enough water. Too much photo lather. We'll go up to 536. I don't know. Should be enough, right? All right, you never know what CK6 do. All right, that's gotta be enough. <laughs> it's gotta be. Especially since I don't really appreciate it on my face. Shouldn't have uh, loaded that much, but let's see how it goes. Stuff is crazy slick. Um, I mean, Chris has said it, uh, and I'll second what he says. In my humble opinion, I find this, well, actually, I can't say because I have tried another base that might combat it. I was gonna say CK6 is the best vegan base on the market, but I haven't tried the Nye base by grooming department. So it's one of the best of, so both of them I'll say are one of the best because I haven't tried it. I'm waiting for the new Nye to drop to try that out. No sense picking up the old Nye, right? Loving this brush. And I don't think it'd be too long to dial this in. I don't think I over lathered or over loaded, hopefully. You know, I'll mind it a little bit thicker. Add more water on the second pass. This scent is very sweet, but I, I really like it. It's not overly sweet. I was gonna get a uh, Cavendish, which is like a sweet, Pipe tobacco from Phoenix, um, but uh, and if I found it a little bit uh, similar to one of my other scents that I've done, so I passed on it. But I still wanted to pick something up that was sweet and maybe slightly smoky, maybe due to the ambergris that's in here. The scent notes are, let's see, talc, ambergris, amorous, French vanilla bean. Japanese sandalwood, cedar, and oak moss. So maybe that smokiness is from the amorous or the ambergris. That, that I'm not sure. I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine the vanilla bean is what makes it sweet. Definitely has that vanilla. I like it. I mean, at first I got a, a sample and I was happy with the sample. So I went with it. And if you think about it, this soap will last for a while because it's five ounces and this is what it looks like now. Um, and it's soft, but like you don't have to load that long. You know, it just lathers itself. All right, we're good for now. We'll get into the razor. Okay, cool. All right, so first pass with the Mula Rocca uh, with the fresh Nasset. I heard this is somewhere in between the R41 and the R89, so we'll see uh, if that actually holds true. Very nice. Very smooth. Doesn't feel uh, aggressive in any way. friend of mine recommended this to me. Oh yeah, let's take a look at that lather channels before I... So somehow it ends up beneath the base plate without the holes there, which I find interesting because it's kind of overflowing from the sides here. Let's see how it rinses out. All right. So I rinsed it and I do have some residual on the bottom here, but that's maybe because it's underhydrated and we'll rinse it some more. Okay, it's not coming out. Interesting. 
Yeah, I kind of wish they included ladder channels, but whatever. It's interesting. So you get very little blade feel. Um, kind of reminds me of a carve almost. The less... Um, almost like a Rockwell. Yeah, because it's got more gap than a lot of the cars I've tried. Or more similar design to, to the Rockwell. Um, my friend told me, he said it feels like a Rockwell on plate 5. But it's slightly less efficient than the Alpha Shaving Outlaw. So I was like intrigued when he said that. It's definitely a comfortable shaver. Uh, like there's no denying that, it's super comfortable. Seems efficient enough so far. It's knocking it down. Mowing it down. <laughs> Just kind of feels weird because the head is head more heavily weighted than the rest of the handle. I kind of prefer my razors to be balanced. But that's just a small nitpick. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a deal breaker. Awesome. The, uh, there's a lot of stubble in the sink right now, which I am seeing, and uh, CK6 seems to be forming pretty well as usual. No surprise there. Um, wow, this feels very comfortable. Some On some razors, this area feels tuggy on the first pass um, because it's pretty much against the grain for me. I still hit it anyways. That felt comfortable. This, this is a very comfortable razor. Might even have a little bit less blade feel than the Henson I've tried. Um, but it still feels kind of fun to use. Like it does it feels super comfortable. Kind of like the diamond back too. I'm just mentioning a bunch of razors that I've used that have like similar ballpark in terms of blade feel, aggressiveness. Yeah, so I'm not honestly so far I'm not crazy about how this rinses. It's like on the back. Um it's just weird. And I still have the lather channels inside are still kind of clogged, they're full. So we're gonna hit it again. All right, maybe because it's under hydrated CK6, but still, still stuck in there. Um, weird design, Mula, weird design. They did a horrible job designing the brush, their silver tip brush. I bought it like months ago, got rid of it, took a loss on it because no one wants that crap. It was a crappy brush. Um, no polite way to say it, but it's true. The brush I'm referring is their hexagonal brush. It was like super heavy. It was aluminum. And I've tried aluminum brushes before. This one was like not even hollow. It was like full, I don't know, it was just heavy as hell. And um, the knot wasn't dense at all. It was a silver tip. And it was actually scritchy for a silver tip. So it might've been lacking in quality. You know, I've tried, uh, and it was like, it wasn't cheap. You know, I've tried br uh, brushes that are literally less than half the price and they had better quality silver tip hairs. But anyways, yeah. Um, I'd steer clear of their brushes, guys. But their razors, pretty nice. The R89 is basically a dupe, <laughs> a copy of the DE89. And then you have uh, the R106, which is the same thing in a different handle. You have the, there's another competitor that copied it too, was it Parker? There's like three different manufacturers that all use the same head. It's like, all right. <laughs> I don't think it's the McCurr. I heard the McCurr is a little different than the D89. So um, I have both pretty much, but like, I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. Very cool.
Yeah, but anyways, this is the stainless steel offering. So, piqued my interest a little bit more than some of the other razors. Because uh, I kind of like stainless steel. It feels like more of a better investment. Um, you know you're getting a razor that's probably going to last a lifetime. Uh, so it kind of gives you that peace of mind. Just drying this out a little bit. This stuff is slick against the grain. Feels like a rock wall, dude. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. That's actually a compliment. You know, it's got uh, a def definitely an interesting design. I just, it's weird. It's picking up the lather, but it's just in a weird way. Sorry, we're like 15 minutes in. Kind of suck at shaving and talking at the same time. Apologize. Against the green. Angle is pretty easy to find. Feels nice. It's definitely mowing it down. You feel the blade feel a little bit more on the against the grain pass, but it's not too bad. It does feel like R5 or R6, probably maybe even R6, you know, on Rockwell. Um, maybe slightly less efficient, but very close. Um, yeah, this is the same price too, ironically, as a Rockwell. It's 100 bucks, uh, by the way. Yeah, interesting. I like it. Um, so far, I'm not blown away. It's not changing the game for me. Like the game changer. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like it. Other competitors in its price range might be the... If you're in the market for a $100 stainless steel razor. You know, you don't want to pay $250 for like a Rex or some crap. You know, or something like I mean, um, uh, the Blackland Dart, hundred bucks, Mula, uh, Raka, hundred bucks, the Rex Envoy is one twenty five, but he runs like fifteen percent deals all the time. You could probably get it for like a hundred. So those are like three popular razors. If you like the blade feel, like the most blade feel out of everything, get the Dart. You like the mid range in between, get the Envoy. If you like a lot less blade feel, maybe get this. Yeah, so I find this scent like sweet and smoky, almost, uh, kind of almost reminds me of like myrrh. It's interesting. I like it. Um, I'd say my favorite PAA scent is Atomic Pumpkin or Gondolier. Those are my top two. But this is nice. I mean, if it was nice enough for me to buy, it's got to be nicer. Yeah, it doesn't feel tuggy at all against the grain, at least with this NAS set. It is picking up the stubble. There you go. You can kind of see it. Um, just so you know, I'm not shaping nothing for the fun of it. <laughs> if, I could, you know, if I could finish in two passes, guys, believe me, I would. <laughs> My hair does not allow for that. So I kind of envy you guys. 
because uh, sometimes three passes can result in irritation, you know? But whatever, I'd rather be BBS with some uh, irritation, or hopefully none, than uh, DFS, damn fine shave. Decent audio feedback. My friend told me it sings. <laughs> um, after trying the carbon, I don't think it sings. But you can hear it. It's got like a nice high pitch to it. Wow, it's pretty efficient. It's not crazy efficient, but it's... Uh... I'm telling you guys, it feels like a rock wall. Which is not a bad thing. This is the most similar uh, feeling razor I've tried to it in my experience. Feeling around here. All right, yeah, we're pretty much done. Uh, I'm gonna cut out, rinse real quick, and then I'll get back to you guys in the uh, post shave. You guys are back for the post shave, so uh, we have the matching splash, but I have something interesting connected to it. This is the PAA atomizer. It looks pretty bougie, I'm not gonna lie. Like, this is bougie as hell. The black was sold out. <laughs> um, Doug, I have an issue. Uh, I have to say something, man. The splash, without this, too much comes out. And with this, too little comes out. So, you know, I can spray this like 20 times. Very little will come out. It's like, like one of those mini uh, perfume bottles, except a lot less comes out. So I'm about to spray it to my hand like four, five, six, seven, eight. And now this thing got stuck. Nine, 10, 11. So you can see I zombered on my hand. Very little, but whatever. We'll apply some Mysterium Serum. And then actually two more pumps. <laughs> Because nothing comes out. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's gonna it's gonna last way longer with the atomizer, but I wish just a little bit more came out. Um, I wish I could transfer it to my own bottles, but um, the glass doesn't really allow for that. Does this have menthol or what? This thing is like, I don't know if that's the burn. It's burning like a cologne, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know what, I should know better. This is a PAA cologne, uh, aftershave. Strong burning there. That was like, what, 20? Um, interesting. Anyways, that's the shade. We used the Harta, which I thought was a pretty cool scent. The Razor, Lula Raka. Couple, as you can see, I rinsed it. Still a little bit of residue. Yeah. Um, so cons, lather channels could be better. Uh, make, maybe make a stainless steel option with a non-hollow handle for ones that want a balanced handle, but uh, I didn't think it was an issue. Um, yeah, so this I have an issue with because lather gets stuck a little bit, at least with Thicker bases with the CK6 if you're not properly hydrating it. Um, super comfortable to hold in the hand. Efficiency it was above average. I like honestly, I'd probably make this, uh, put this very similar in terms of shaving experience to the R5 plate on the Rockwell, and that's just how I feel. You might feel differently, but um, it's not bad. But uh, anyways, that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.